Kevin Parker, the owner of Miss Tootsie's Restaurant Bar Lounge and the owner of KDP Lifestyle and Luxury Suites. Okay, so it's 10 things that I believe that you should know in hospitality. And the first thing you definitely should know is that you always need to smile. You always need to be professional. You need to be courteous. You need to lead the guest. Lead the guest meaning if a guest asks you where the restroom is, where anything is, instead of pointing and giving directives like that, you lead the guest to that designated location. Always make sure that the guests are taken care of. Listen, always listen to what the guest has to say. No matter if it's positive, negative, different, difference of opinion, listen to what the guest has. Accommodate the guest. If the guest asks for something that's not on your menu, the guest asks for a service that you don't offer, make it happen. At times here, what we do, if a guest asks for something we don't have it, I tell the, tell the employee, then we need to make it happen. Whether we go to the market, we go to the grocery, whatever, we have to make it happen. Always make sure that the guest is comfortable. You have to ask your guests, are you comfortable? Is that a great seat for you? Is this a great fit for you? Do you want to be over there? Do you not want to be over there? Be attentive. Always pay attention to the guest. Body language is the most important thing. If a guest is sitting there and they're picking around with their plate, I've always been told that means they're not happy with their food. If a guest is in one of our luxury suites and they're bouncing up and down on the bed, it can mean one or two things. They love the bed or the bed is too soft. So always be attentive to their moves. Next. Anytime you deal with vendors, you deal with clients, you should always deal with a contract. The contract will ensure that everyone will stay true to what their commitment is. Rather than verbal, it's all written, you always have a document to go back to. From a marketing perspective, for instance, if you run a campaign and the campaign isn't working, you definitely need to look at your numbers. You know, we use Constant Contact all the time, and we see if people like the email, if they open it up, if they forward the email, if they Facebook it, if they tweet it, then we actually know that's working. If not, we know how to change the demographic of it. We know how to change the pulse speed of it and move it around. One of the things that we do here uh, at Ms. Titsies and Kevin Parker, the Kevin Parker Company, is we always are on um, track to make sure that our branding is consistent. You know, we make sure that the color variations are consistent. We make sure that the way in which we use fonts are consistent. Like McDonald's, you know, when you see the M, you know that's McDonald's. We want to be synonymous with, when people look at our logos, when people look at our branding, they say that's Miss Tootsie's. They don't get it confused with any other restaurant or any other establishment. You kind of become synonymous with something. And I think that all of our branding and all of our marketing aspects and all of our marketing campaigns we keep a certain branding, a certain look, a certain style, a certain feel. Um, one of the things I would encourage people to do is if you do have a team, whether it's a graphic designer, whether it's a writer that you have, whether it's media staff, marketing staff, you need to make sure that you keep it intact. intact. If you don't and you change it, you need to make sure that you change it from the perspective of that person can pick up where someone else left off. I remember so many years ago when I was in my beginning stages and um, I changed graphic designers. You actually can look at my work and you can look at the campaigns we did up to a certain point and then it looked like it totally changed. It was like a whole different company and I learned from that mistake. So what I learned is that the relationship that you have with your vendors, it needs to be strong, it needs to be intact. You need to make sure you get all of your originals, you need to get all of your documentation, you need to get all of your film, you need to get all of your JPEGs, all of your information. So that if you do, you know, change vendors as you go on, you can always make sure that that other vendor can pick up, you know, the tone or the pulse speed of what you're actually sending out to your clients. Lastly, the thing that I think is, is not most important, but is very, 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 very important. As time moves on, you see technology is changing, but you gotta stay fresh. You can't do what you did before and think you're gonna get the same results. You gotta do what's new, what's fresh, whether it's color variations, whether it's a different font. I'm not saying change your branding, but when you do promotions, make sure that you're current with the way in which people are laying things out. Make sure you're current. If someone's using four by sixes and they're not using five by seven for, for flyers or promotional materials, make sure you're current. Go on websites all the time. See what's happening in the West Coast. See what's happening at the hottest restaurants, the hottest, the hottest venues that are comparable to your venue. And your competition not, is not always in your city. Your competition can be coastal, it could be anywhere. So for me, where I get most of my great ideas, I get my great ideas from going on the website and seeing what other people are doing. Because I believe in why recreate something that's already wonderful. I might want to tweak a little bit, I might get a great concept or a great idea, but when you see what's already being done and you see it's working, then what you do is you capitalize on what's working and then you kind of make it your own.